the LGS Foundation supports families that are impacted by LGS, which is Lennox Gastaut syndrome. Um, and essentially, it's a, a rare disease that is made up of a, a collection of symptoms. The kids have more than one type of seizure. They start seizing in very early childhood, um, under the age of eight for most of them. Um, they have hard to control seizures. They also have very specific abnormal uh, brain waves that you can see on an EEG machine. And then that leads to subsequent development delay. So my daughter is 28 years old. She has LGS, I've been in the space for a long time. Uh, she developed seizures at the age of two and nobody should walk this journey alone. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible journey. Our kids are seizing all the time, uh, every day. You know, uh, A good day was five seizures for my daughter. A bad day was hundreds, I stopped counting. And so we live in crisis mode. So we're really here to support our families to try to make, um, finding the information they need to make decisions about their child's uh, medical care and, and their lives, uh, easy for them to find and to really push research forward in this area. That's what we do. Nobody's born with LGS. LGS is something that develops over time when a child's brain is developing and it's bombarded by recurrent seizures, right? By this abnormal burst of electrical activity and not just an occasional seizure, we're talking, like I said, hundreds of seizures a day for these children. And so it completely alters brain development. So everyone with LGS starts out with whatever their cause of seizures is, right? So whether it was a birth injury, um, stroke, uh, lack of oxygen, or whether it was a gene, right? So uh, it could be ge a genetic, then the first seizure comes. And then a second seizure comes and now they have epilepsy. And then they develop treatment resistant epilepsy after they failed two or more medications. And then at some point in the journey, in some kids, they the seizures take over the brain, um, the development of the brain, and the brain starts to wire itself. But it wires itself in a very uh, stereotyped way, and that is shown in the L LGS EEG. So we have very specific EEG that's characteristic of very very bad wiring that the network has gone horribly wrong and developed itself, right? And so we are like. Um, uh, to put it sort of uh, uh, loosely, uh, LGS is like metastasis of epilepsy. It has now spread in the young child. And once you have these EEG features and these abnormal wiring, it is very, very hard to learn and develop normally. So we're talking about a profoundly intellectually disabled population. And so, um, you know, we're not dealing with the same issues uh, as families who are, are introduced to their first seizure, right? Um, we're all seizure veterans by the time you get to the LGS field. And we've got children and adults, and, and some of them do grow up into adults, who are severely impacted in trying to navigate the world, not only from their intellectual disability standpoint, but also from their very severe seizures all the time. You know, there's a lot of concrete out there in the world, and our kids fall, they get injured, they bust their face, you know, they get skull fractures, and then they um, have a really high uh, issue and recurrence of seizure clusters, seizures that cluster and don't stop. Uh, which is a medical emergency that you you, you could die from, um, and also seizures that don't stop on their own, also called status epilepticus. So here's a group of people that are just living in crisis mode all the time, and I think it's important to have a community. In fact, sometimes I think that's what all we you know all we have is a community. We don't have seizure control. Uh, we lock ourselves in our own home because uh, living with LGS is so hard. And um, you know, we try to navigate the world and sometimes it's only another parent who can help us to figure out how to do that navigating.